Hello, hello, and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. What a rally. Bitcoin is back above 30K. It actually reached basically 31K, yeah, 30.8, which is pretty much the high that was made in April. Yeah, nearly the highest price um, in, um, in a couple of months, yeah. So it is very, very interesting. Very interesting times already highlighted to you earlier today that as long as we're holding a specific support level, we can go higher. I did update on Telegram and Discord throughout the afternoon, obviously UK time here, um, the support level. So we did climb higher as anticipated based on the structure and based on the support level that was updated regularly. And now we are at a point where we say, okay, we have a three wave move up. Okay. So if you don't know about the larger context, I'm not going to talk about it again. We talked about it earlier today in, in a couple of videos. Basically, Bitcoin reached our trend reversal area, touched it here a couple of times in June and then broke back into it. People had a couple of days time to accumulate if they wanted to in this larger trend reversal area. And this was also the point where we said, OK, here a more substantial low could be made, but we can't really say without a signal but this is the first time that we have a wave count complete to the downside another low is still possible of course but this is the first time where a reversal can occur if a reversal occurs it can be fast okay and i try to make that so clear this time because i always know what happens people don't anticipate such a rally and they don't anticipate how long it can go how extreme it can be and how fast it can be. So I really try to make it crystal clear throughout the last week that if we get a reversal out of this trend reversal area, it will be very, very fast. And that's what we see here. And also, you now know what I meant by saying that Bitcoin and Ethereum will probably be the winners of the next trade because they are outperforming currently the market. Yeah? Of course, some altcoins are waking up now as well and they will catch up and so on. You know, It's always that game of, of where the money is flowing. But what I wanted to talk about is here, the three wave moves to the upside that we have now. We have a wave one to the upside, a wave two to the downside, a very shallow wave two. We talk about that in a minute. We have a wave three to the upside. And now at some point we could get this wave four. It's very much possible that this wave four has now started. Evidence isn't great. We do not have a lot of evidence. And by the way, I need to move the support area to the right hand side. If you're wondering where that support area is coming from, this is the support for wave four, which I've been updating throughout the day. Because as I said before, if we really are in a, in a breakout, then um, in this third wave here, where are we? In this yellow third wave, which could go to 40K, Again, the condition is that support is holding, right? Um, then what we need to do to establish, okay, how high do we go? And when, what is the signal that we are breaking down? We need to be updating this support, okay? And it's basically based on the high. And I've updated it uh, throughout the day. So it's now 28.7K. The ideal support for wave four, four goes all the way down to 28.7K. In a normal situation where this would be an impulse to the upside, I would say, yeah, you know, a break below 28.7K will most likely lead to a breakdown to new lows. However, situation here is a little different. I know it's a com complex topic, but the markets are complex at the moment and it's ideal for people to learn something. I did, again, I shared it already on Telegram and Discord earlier. Um, I mean, it's worked so far, but I would now like to make clear that um, this move up here is so far only in three waves. It has impulsive characteristics, yeah, and I am primarily looking at this as an impulse. And as long as in any pullback, yeah, price reacts to 29.7, 29.2 and 28.7K, yeah, somewhere in this region and pushes higher in a fifth wave, things are clear, then we have five waves to the upside. All good. At some point then, maybe around 80, uh, maybe around 32K or a little bit before that, this wave five should top in wave one. And then ideally we get a bit of a deeper pullback. Okay, maybe just to the trend line. Again, as I said before, pullbacks can be shallow in a larger third wave. Okay, so I'm just warning that pullbacks can be shallow. We had a pu shallow pullback here. It just sometimes happens when the market is very bullish. Pullbacks are shallow. 
It always happens when people try to be overly smart with their positions and try to wait for the last low because they want to grab the lowest price and try to be super smart. Often that last low doesn't happen, all right? So I just, I just, I'm just saying pullbacks can be shallow. Just consider that. That's why I like the idea of scaling into support and scaling out in resistance, right? Um, that's how I think the crypto market trades best. Okay, so what I wanted to explain is the problem, the small problem, this wave two down here was very shallow. It is a possibility that this here is just a B wave which would be very cheeky, okay? Because then we would really go to new lows. That's the bearish scenario, but as long as support is holding, we don't emphasize it, okay? But we need to be aware that, of course, you know, another low is still possible, but as long as support is holding, as long as we have this impulsive characteristic to the upside, no need to focus on it too much. However, I'm observing two possible bullish scenarios here. One is the impulse, the other one would be a diagonal structure. And I'm going to show that to you now. But the diagonal is a likely one, in my opinion, because this wave two was very shallow. It's not the primary, it's an alternative. But because this wave two was so shallow, it could be a diagonal. And the reason is a diagonal would be A, B, C in wave one. Then we could get the wave two now in an A, B, C, and that could go below support. That's what I mean, you know, don't set your stops maybe too tight in this scenario because you might, you know, some people might be inclined to set a stop below that support and that's normally fine. But I think this market is difficult at the moment. It's not like, um, you know, level one, you're, in a high, you're at a higher level here now. Um, if this is a diagonal, it could pull back a little more, just a little more and then take off, right? And then we would get a third wave in an A, B, C, and then fourth wave in an A, B, C, and a fifth wave in an A, B, C. So that's what I mean. This is definitely a possibility. I'm just saying, you know, that doesn't mean that if we go below 28.7K, we're necessarily bearish. It means that it could just be a wave one in a larger diagonal, all right? Um, also because this wave one wasn't ideal. So it could very much be that this is just a corrective A wave. The wave B was very shallow, which B waves sometimes do. They are some of the most, yeah, you know, variable waves in Elliott wave. So yeah, but we've got two possible bullish scenarios and of course one bearish one um, with a diagonal. I would pay attention to the trend line here. Let me just double check. Let me jump. Uh, no, I was thinking sometimes you know, sometimes you can draw a channel better on log, but I don't think this lends itself to a channel. The thing is, if this is a diagonal, it's not, it doesn't look great because diagonals would typically either be contracting, oops, or you have a parallel channel or something that this is an expanding diagonal is of course a possibility. It's just a bit ugly, right? But this is certainly something to observe as well. Um, but they often don't work out. Now, if this really is this, then the pullback could also go to the lower trend line and then take off. Either way, I would, I would just, I think the message here is just don't maybe, maybe consider not having your stops too tight. Yeah, or if you have them, just be ready. That it can just give you a, a bit of a whipsaw here, and come down and then basically, um, yeah, take off. But yeah, overall at the moment, um, bullish. Okay, at the moment, bullish. And I'm still primarily waiting for a wave four and a wave five. If we break below 28.7, then I will consider a diagonal structure. What would be support then? I think support could be then down to 26K possibly, which is the 78.6 retracement. So that tells you a lot about the risk, okay? I think that's the main benefit. It tells you possibly price could drop to 26K from here and still be bullish, that tells you a lot of where your risk is sitting because it could be a 15% drop is needed or 16%, a little bit lower, to tell you that we're bearish. Yeah. So the question is, do you want to risk that all? Do you want to lose that all to find out that we're bearish? Okay, so that, that's an individual decision. Yeah. And um, But again, it tells you a lot about where the risk is sitting at the moment. 
Yeah, very interesting. And also volume is here. Yeah, um, a lot of people come in the last few days, you know, there's no volume for a third wave rally. And I said, okay, volume is deceptive because volume really is only there when it started, when it has pumped already. You know, it's a bit like coming late to the party when you wait for volume to show up. The crowd is already there. If that's how you trade, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's my update about Bitcoin. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Here we have, you know, you can get access to all TradingView live charts. There are signals for gold members. Uh, we have the different chat rooms, um, all sorts of stuff and content. Um, feel free to check that out and also make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.